my name is, is Mr. Nelson. I'm the Outdoor Leadership Instructor. And here at Warren Tech, the Outdoor Leadership Program is all about transforming adventurers into outdoor leaders. So in this presentation, I wanna share what students learn in the program as well as credits they earn. As, and also wanna tell you kind of how students demonstrate competency or demonstrate the skills that they've learned as well as give you reasons why students enjoy this program. Because let's be honest, I'm kind of paid to say this is a great program and want to give students a chance to kind of share a little bit as well uh, and give you a chance to answer or to ask some questions so I can help you understand more of what we do. So in this program, students learn backpacking, rock climbing, leave no trace, wilderness ethics, risk management, wilderness survival, wilderness first aid, backcountry cooking, outdoor leadership, or outdoor leadership theory and methodology, orienteering and route finding and challenge course facilitation. Now we don't just learn these skills. Ultimately the goal is, is outdoor leadership. And so we learn backpacking so that we can also learn how do we lead backpacking? How do we lead rock climbing and facilitate challenge courses and do all of these different, experience, different activities. So it's not just about doing them, it's learning how to give other people those experiences and how it changes when I go from just a recreationalist to an actual leader. Students demonstrate competency through relevant hands-on experiences and skills demonstrations. And so we learn about things. Sometimes we have overnight trips, so maybe it's backpacking. We spend a week or two learning about, about different backpacking skills, learning how to, how to ration food, how to do all these different things. And then we actually spend a number of days backpacking and utilizing those skills. You know, we do written tests like other programs do. We also do skills tests. So backpacking, maybe, you know, one of our skills is setting up a tent. So students then have to, for the test, set up a tent. They have to put together a stove and ignite it. They have to pack a backpack. And so we have a lot of, all of our units have kind of practical tests that go with it. And we have some, sometimes we assess you know, or demonstrate skills through various means of competition. We also do trip planning. And so get to kind of that, some of that program management like backpacking instead of just like, oh, let's go backpacking. Le learning how do we actually plan a trip? How do we come up with a budget? How does permitting work? How does, how, what are all the different things we need to, to plan for? You know, we also demonstrate skills by, by leading other people, by teaching, lessons and also through some group assessments where I have all my students or each class have to go through a series of things together and they have to not only demonstrate competency but also have to work together in order to to accomplish those those tasks. Self-care is another way that they're demonstrating their skills just their ability to take care of themselves and meet their own needs because we're an outdoor program we do things outside in the cold in the rain in the heat and if, a, if, you know, I want to help students learn how to take care of themselves, because if they can't take care of themselves, and if that's not kind of second nature to them and doesn't come just really easy, then they're never going to be able to care for anyone else in the backcountry. And so kind of gaining some of those skills. And also proactive risk management instead of reactive, like instead of just waiting for things to happen, being able to see what could happen, what possible outcomes are there and let's make decisions that help to avoid those, those negative outcomes. And also just in their real-time decision-making, like the decisions they make moment by moment demonstrate whether or not they're understanding the skills that we're doing. So challenge course facilitation, where we're, we're learning how to belay high ropes courses, how to, like, how to like manage and run people through elements, so we're actually out there on the challenge course. P students are participating, students are, are belaying and taking various roles. And we've got to learn how to set up a challenge course. And so we're actually climbing at height, setting up pulleys, accessing cables, accessing elements. And so demonstrating our skills by actually doing it. And uh, not just talking about rescues and what could go wrong but actually working through scenarios and, and solving those problems and learning how to use different types of equipment uh, to manage different kinds of situations. 
And then things like rock climbing, we've got to learn technique. How do we, man how do we demonstrate that? By actually going rock climbing. We don't just learn about it, we're actually going to do it. And we've got, got to set up climbing anchors. So actually go, going out to the cliff, managing risks appropriately so that we can learn how to set up anchor systems. We do backcountry cooking and learning lots of different methodologies and, and learning cooking and baking techniques, learning how to use different stoves and, and different things. And so actually, we actually spend a lot of time kind of cooking and baking things. And so students get those, those experiences and hopefully get to eat some pretty decent food along the way. And once again, we have you know, some over, <clears throat> overnight trips where students are learning skills ahead of time and then putting them into practice like winter camping where now we're kind of taking self-care to a new level where we're, you know, it's pretty cold. People are like, oh, I know how to dress for the cold, but now think of like, okay, I'm sitting on the coldest ski lift of my life. And like, how, what do I need to do to stay warm, to stay dry and to actually have fun in the midst of this experience? In navigation, navigation, we learn orienteering and route finding and navigation. And so we have a few different kind of challenges where I set up where you know they have to use the skills that they that they've learned in order to kind of accomplish you know different tasks that I set up before them and we have we're an outdoor program we have an outdoor classroom uh, my students have been outside this whole year like maybe parts of just a couple days this whole year have students been inside a building uh, and so a lot of this is learning self-care being able to take care of yourself how do I stay warm how do I stay comfortable and function in this environment so that I know how, so that I can take care of others and lead others in the way that I need to. In this program, students get high school credit. They get environmental science, lifetime fitness, as well as outdoor leadership, which is an elective. Uh, they get up to 22 college credits, which are concurrent enrollment through Red Rocks, but backpacking, rock climbing, wilderness ethics, risk management, wilderness first aid, backcountry cooking, wilderness survival, foundations of outdoor leadership, leave no trace trainer, challenge course facilitation and orienteering and route finding, as well as earning a couple, a few different certifications with that wilderness first aid, CPR, leave no trace trainer. All of these things are embedded in our program. And so they're not just like, oh, if I wanna get this, then I have to do something else. This isn't like an AP class where I have to take a test. It's like, this is embedded in our program. If you pass it here, you get the credit. So just some words from some former students. Uh, my journey through outdoor leadership has been informative, challenging, and rewarding. It has helped me develop into an educated and confident leader. I feel confident and prepared to lead groups through the wilderness, a ropes course, or even in other real life situations. Outdoor leadership has equipped me to be effective, me to effectively interact with guides, participants, and to strive to reach my fullest leadership potential. I've become exceedingly more comfortable presenting to and directing groups, making quick and intelligent decisions, and being confident in my own abilities. Additionally, I've made strong and enjoyable friendships that will last a long time after this class has ended. Outdoor leadership has been the best decision I could have made for my senior year of high school, and I'm grateful to have had this opportunity. Another student said, I've learned more this year in outdoor leadership than I have in the rest of my high school career. Now, I really do hope that's not true. I hope that everyone else, that they're learning great things other places, but I am flattered that, that they feel like they've grown that much. Uh, and just, I've got a, a few, just a couple of quick videos. Uh, later on, I'll, I'll let another student a current student share. These are uh, three current students. Well, I just really like outdoor leadership because we get to play games and you have a lot of fun and you meet new people who can become really good friends of yours. I look forward to it every week. It's the best part of my week. I love having fun, starting fires, and just exploring what you can do in nature. What I like about outdoor leadership is, um, first of all, that I get high school credit to do things like rock climb, so that's a lot better than regular high school. 
And also, there's a lot of things we learn in this class that would be really difficult to learn anywhere else or would cost a lot of money to take like a class through a guiding business. Like I learned a lot about rock climbing that I would have never learned anywhere else or it would have been really hard for me. So that's really unique about this class. Um, what I like about Warren Tech is that it made me really like learning. In the traditional school environment, um, you were kind of forced to do a bunch of assignments and it was kind of like learn and forget but here it's really hands-on learning and so you have fun doing it and you do what you're passionate about and you're around a community you're passionate about and like um, everyone enjoys doing the um, course that you're in so that's really cool and you make some really great friends. Well I just and so in this program, what we do, it's all about intentional shared experiences. And so it's amazing to be able to look at students and tell them ahead of time, like at the beginning of the year, that if you invest yourself fully into this year, that you will leave a different person. That at the end of the year, you will be, so, you'll, you'll be transformed by this year. Not because I am this amazing, incredible person or I have these magical abilities, but because there's power in intentional shared experience. And so we learn a lot of skills. We, we actually get out and do, you know, do things, learn things in a hands-on way. We gain experience. So you're leaving this program, not just with a bunch of knowledge, but with a lot of valuable experiences that you can take with you for the rest of your life. We also grow as individuals. In this program, you learn more about yourself. You learn more about your, your boundaries, your limits, what, what you're capable of, what you want to do. And as, as a leader, we lead out of who we are. And so as growing as a leader, we're also developing as individuals. And we grow in community, learning how to, like, how to work with other people, learning how to, how to work as part of a team, as well as uh, just building relationships in the process. And my students build confidence in who they are. It's amazing to watch them just grow in, uh, you know, they may know what they're doing, but it takes them to, a while to realize, like, I do know what I'm doing and growing in that confidence. And develop competence. So they're, they, uh, they know what they're doing. They're able to, to perform all of the, the necessary skills and do, those, do them competently. And, you know, fun is not the goal of my program, but it sure is a great byproduct. Um, like, I don't go out saying, like, our whole, we just want to have fun today. Um, but we do. We have a lot of fun al along the way. You know, students face a lot of different challenges. And it's a lot of hard work. But, they, but over, the students overcome challenges and learn and grow in the process. And they learn how to manage risks appropriately, how to assess risk, how to identify them, and manage them as they hear me say all the time, like I, I try to never use the word safe because nothing we do is safe, whether it's driving here, whether it's uh, walking across, like through the field, nothing we do is safe, but we're going to learn how to identify risk and manage them appropriately. And students becoming leaders. I don't have this mold that I'm trying to force all of my students into. Really, I want to help them become the best leader that they can. So help them take steps to towards becoming the best leader that they can be. And so I wanna give, I know I have at least one current student on. Belle, can you just kind of share your perspective um, of what, uh, what outdoor leadership is like or why you chose it? Yeah, outdoor leadership is a really great program. Um, I chose it because I wanted to do something that got me school credits, but also seemed different. And so outdoor leadership is definitely that. It's um, fun to be outside and be able to learn all these different things, but then you also get credit for it for high school, which is really nice. Cause I am not a huge person that likes to do in school assignments. So it's really nice and a different way to learn. And lots of the skills that we learn are also good to use outside in the real world like building the fires and cooking and the camping, like people do that for fun. And if we're able to do it in a better way with managing our risk, it's um, really great because then we can help others and show others how to do it as well. And I just really like the class because um, 
our classmates are like a family and we all really get along and it builds really great friendships. Cool, thanks, Belle. And so if you have any specific questions, just put them in the chat. Uh, I will do my best to answer them. If they're kind of general Warren Tech questions, I might steer you back to the kind of Warren Tech FAQ page. Um, but once again, if you have any questions, type them, type them in the chat. If you do not have any questions, I don't have any uh, anything else really here, kind of additional supports for open house are located on the on the uh, open house website. Uh, I do have a question. Do we have any, do we do any avalanche safety? We, uh, we talked briefly about it. We don't enter, we, the snow stuff we do, we don't ever really enter avalanche terrain. Um, and a little bit of knowledge is dangerous. And so I don't, if I'm not, if I'm not going to cover it um, sufficiently, I'm going to kind of steer them towards more learning. Um, and so like I have like an airy level one uh, and we talk briefly about kind of snow science and avalanche danger, but we don't spend spend time really focused on it. Um, I have another question. What are the ideal grades to apply for the program uh, as a sophomore, junior, uh, et cetera? Uh, so ultimately really with any Warren Tech program, uh, it's hard to say what, uh, I mean, some programs are pretty competitive. We over the years usually have you know, 80 to 100 people applying for 28 spots. And so grades are part of the picture, but we also understand that grades aren't the only part of the picture. Uh, so really I would direct you to our counselors to, to, to look at, to kind of look through that. Um, but I, I wanna say that just if your grades aren't great, I would still encourage you to apply whatever to whatever warm tech program you're looking at. Um, but they all, they are important. So if you're, if you're a sophomore or if you're a freshman or sophomore, like kind of bringing those up, let's see, what is the GPS, uh, GPA policy when applying? Uh, we don't have a requirement necessarily. Our counselors have an, al an algorithm that they kind of plug in looking at, looking at grades, attendance, other things. Uh, but I would direct you back to the, to, the, to the open house website. There's a counselor's kind of page there um, in a way to kind of connect to them because they can answer those questions specifically. Uh, outdoor leadership is a central campus program. It is not North, even though um, I live closer to North and it might be handy. Um, this campus is just situated in a really great spot for, uh, for our program. Like we can access Green Mountain from, from our classroom like without hitting any road other than the one right outside. Our, our building. Um, it's just really central to a lot of the things we like to do. Um, and so there's no plan for it, to, it to, to move or add another program. But we do have busing and things like that, which uh, should be addressed in the Warren Tech 101 presentation. Because I have students coming from Stanley Lake. I've had students coming from as far as uh, Georgetown and riding buses from Clear Creek or riding, you know, so a lot of the schools do offer busing. Um, some of the spots that we camp at, it, uh, we do a lot kind of, um, so rock climbing, we are overnight, we usually go to Penitente, which is down in the San Luis Valley across on the western side of the San Luis Valley from like the sand dunes uh, for for our winter camping trip and our backpacking trip, we're up off of Guanella Pass um, on the non um, Lost Creek Will or non Mount Evans Wilderness side. Um, so up in the Geneva Creek Basin, it just really suits our needs as far as um, it has some great, really, really impacted areas and some fairly pristine areas. Um, and so that's where we do do a lot of our trips. I've been leading trips in that area and in Penitente since 2006. And so it also is nice for like, it just, uh, it fits our teaching really well. Any other questions? Let's see, I think. 
I've answered those that have been asked. If you do have any other questions, feel free to put them in here. I'll stay on answering questions for a few more minutes um, if people have them. And the next presentation will start at seven. So when is the best time to apply? The best time to apply um, is now. I don't know the counselors. So if you go to the Warren Tech or the Open House website, there's a link to the counselors and the 101 presentation should have that timeline. Uh, I don't know what the priority deadline is this year. Usually it is kind of the in the next couple of weeks from now. And so as long as you apply by the priority deadline, you get considered in the first pool of people. And that goes the same for all the programs. It's not first come first serve. It's as long as you apply by the priority deadline, then you're you're considered first. And then there's another, then the next deadline, then they they fill open spots from there. 